But what I'm seeing in women is these tendencies to have this emotional burnout because even if even if you you work and have children, if you're single, if you don't have kids, if you're married, if you're a stay-at-home mom, it doesn't matter. We are experiencing these these things because it, society is still trying to tell us who we are as women, and I'm kind of tired of it. So let's talk about perfectionism and guilt. Um, we're going to start with perfectionism. So let me go ahead and get a show of hands. For all of you in the room who think you might have some perfectionistic tendencies. Yikes. Did you keep your hands up and look around? So I'm saying about what 99%, but, but there are just a few simple little things I want you to start with. First of all, lose the word. Because I would go around, and I'm guessing some of you do. It was like I had this like Miss America sash and a crown. It's like, well, I am a perfectionist. I remember my mom would come over um, when I was younger and she would say, well, I would help you fold your towels, but I know how you are. <laughs> like, you know, how, you know, because obviously all the folds have to go on the same side. And obviously all the colors have to go together and all of the, <clears throat> that's the way I used to live my life. Now I'm gonna share something with you. My Christmas tree up until a few days ago was still up from last year. Now don't balk at me. Let me tell you, and this, I'm sharing this with you because I want you to let go of perfectionism no matter what area of life it's in. It could be house cleaning. It could be parenting. It could be working. It could be spousing. David are never coming to my house. David has a beautiful, <laughs> nicely decorated house. But the reason that I share that with you is actually my husband's idea. And, and I'll tell you, the only reason we took it down is because we put our house up for sale. That is the only reason we took it down. What happened was... I travel a lot, and when I'm home, I want to spend time with my husband, with my kids. And so the Christmas tree was up, of course, last year, and about the first week in January, I was like, well, we should go ahead and take it down. And then it was the third week in January, and then it was the first week in February, and then it was the middle of February, and I was really getting upset. I was like, I've got to get this down. And he said, you know what, let's not take it down. And I said, why? And he said, well, because... Let's leave it up as a symbol that this year we know what's important to us. Taking a Christmas tree down just because the whole other rest of the world says you need to take your Christmas tree down. If we leave it up, it's a symbol. We have a couple of businesses. We have a family. We don't get to see them very often. We're working on it. We're trying to, to cut down some of those extra things in our life. So don't get value from saying, well, I am a perfectionist. That's just me. See, I'm being harsh. Let me reword that. <laughs> but it's, it's not, and I did. I took tremendous value in the fact that everything was perfect. But who wants to be around me when I'm not trying to always be perfect? It's just not a fun way to be. So the first thing is to not use the word. But if I tell you not to use the word, I better give you a word to use instead, right? So change the word and say that you are excellent or faithful. Faithful is one of my favorites. High achieving is another good word. You know, I'm excellent at what I do at work. I'm faithful to my family. Um, I'm faithful to my friends or my children or whatever it is. It's a different mindset. Everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glory. I mean, everyone. What does the word say? It's everyone. Every single one of us. We're all going to mess up. But it's okay. We're going to talk in a little bit about forgiveness. And I'm going to give you some other ways to get rid of perfectionism. 